Hi, I'm Timothy, and I'm here at Google Cloud Next London 2018, and I'm standing with DeepD, who just gave a session on Cloud Spanner. Now, what's one feature you talked about today for the first time that you're really excited about? So today at London Next, we launched DML, which is Data Manipulation yes. Language, which is basically SQL insert, update, and deletes, uh, and I demoed that at my session, which was very exciting, and this feature basically makes it look and smell and feel a lot more like traditional relational databases. Um, so we're very excited to have the feature. I imagine that really reduces the complexity of the getting started experience with Cloud Spanner. That's exactly it. Um, you know, Spanner is basically a no compromise database and our customers love it for that, right? Because you get horizontal scalability as well as uh, relational semantics, transactions, and strong consistency across the globe that nobody else has. Uh, however, like this was the one key feature that was missing for our customers because they wanted to use existing ORMs, existing uh, tooling, et cetera, with Cloud Spanner, which becomes a lot easier to do now with DML, with SQL insert update deletes, and you know you can use JDBC drivers. We're launching the JDBC driver with this capability today as well. So it's just much easier for you to use ORMs, existing tooling, and to migrate existing uh, apps or create new apps with this. Thank you, Deepti. Thank you, Tim. I'm sitting here with Robert Saxby, who gave a session yesterday on, was it, blobs to tables. Is that right? Blobs to table. You got absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, what was that session about? So that session was about the different storage types that we have at Google Cloud and how to choose which one for your use case. If you were to choose one as your favorite, what would it be? Oh, I have at least three favorites. <laughs> okay, give me two. <laughs> give me two, okay, I'll give you two. One is Bigtable. I love our ability to be able to actually random read a single row of data, a single digit latency, and scale that up to you know infinite size. We have customers really reading like tens of millions of rows per second, and they can scale that up on demand to be able to address their, their, their use case. The second one has to be um, BigQuery. So I'm a data analytics guy. I mean, so I'm heavily involved there, heavily invested. So BigQuery, first of all, it's a, a common misconception. Say BigQuery, they think, oh, it's just this one thing. Yeah, it is one thing. It's our data warehouse, but our data warehouse consists of two parts. It consists of the storage, which is capacitor, and it consists of the serving tree, the part that actually runs your SQL query. Now from that serving tree, that SQL, where you, you run your SQL, you can actually query our native storage with capacitor, or you can query storage which is like federated to Google Cloud storage. But when it's that native storage, we get absolutely phenomenal performance. So think about, you know, you have a petabyte of data in a table. How long does it take to query that? Forever. So, forever, absolutely not. So what we do, we partition it and we cluster it. So there was a, another talk yesterday, a talk on BigQuery and performance were from Elliot, then he showed how we could actually query that data like and get like within a few seconds by applying the right partitions and clusters to your data. It's that's awesome. amazing. Yeah. And it, it actually goes a lot quicker than forever. Yeah, that's a lot quicker than forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing next to Henry Bell, who gave a session on Kubernetes. Henry, what was the one part of the session that gets you most excited about Kubernetes? Right, sure. So we're doing quite a lot of work to integrate the, the native Kubernetes world with GCP services. So thinking about things like Cloud Armor for DDoS protection, the Identity Aware Proxy for strong authentication, and the integrations with our global load balancer. So this is a globally distributed system that allows us to provide a, a single Anycast IP address. And this means that we can route users to resources that are near to them. So for example, you might have an application running in two Kubernetes clusters in two different regions, which means that users are routed to the uh, cluster that's nearest to them, which means that we can improve on latency and offer the best kind of user experience we possibly can, as well as being able to provide nice things like really strong, solid geo-redundancy, for example. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Henry. Thank you. I'm sitting with Oliver Madden, who gave a session today about the Chrome browser. Oliver, could you tell us, what's your favorite feature of the Chrome browser that, say, you use in enterprise, but average users might not know about? I'd probably have to go with um, legacy browser support. Yeah. Tell me about that. What is it? Uh, basically, it's an extension that allows uh, admins to um, uh, populate URLs that specifically need legacy technology, so Silverlight, ActiveX, etc. So you can help your users when they need that particular technology, Chrome will flip into your designated browser, probably IE in this case, um, uh, just for the duration of that and then when they need or when they can use a more modern browser um, and they key in the URL, I don't know, gmail.com, it will flip back into Chrome for them. That's amazing. Seamless. Awesome. Thanks so much, Oliver. Thank you. 
Now Lee's doing a demo in the Demo Derby later. Uh, Lee, could you give us a quick synopsis of what the demo is? Sure, so I'm building this customer care application where I'm using Dialogflow and all other Google Cloud components to create like a real chatbot experience. That's awesome. And uh, what I really like about the demo is that you're using a bunch of different GCP components so that you can create a complete solution for this customer care. Oh yeah, I'm using a lot. So actually I'm using Kubernetes first of all. So I create like a front-end container and then a back-end container, the back-end container that talks to Dialogflow through the SDK. Then every time when customers, they type something in the chatbot, we pass it also to PubSub. And from PubSub there's a cloud function that captures the message, goes into a DLP API to remove sensitive information. Then we move it to the NLP API to detect the sentiment so people can really figure out what people are thinking and if they're happy or not. And then we pass it into the, the, the data warehouse like BigQuery which, so we can push it into a dashboard and then you can really see some awesome things and start to optimize your chatbot. What a cool flow. Yeah. What's, your, what's your favorite technology in there? Definitely Dialogflow. Why is that? Because it's so easy to create a chatbot. You don't need to be technical to set up a chatbot, but at the same time you can go very deep and use the SDK and do all crazy stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Well, if you want to find out some more, click the links in the description below. Thanks, Lee. Thank you.